allowed for the expansion of uh, active players to 15. Uh, how is that going to help uh, beyond just having a couple of extra bodies? You know what, that's good. Like John, we've had that discussion a lot over the years and I'm glad they decided to do that because I think, you know, especially in the bubble when we had healthy bodies that we had to name inactive. I mean, that's tough. So I think in this situation um, and moving forward, it just makes sense to, if somebody's healthy, um, you know, very rarely are you going to have more than 15 that are available. And so it, it makes it um, rewards everybody that's available with the chance to address and ultimately play. I think that's good. I'm a big fan of that move with regard to Jalen's leadership. I think he's, obviously shown that in many ways since he's been here, both on and off the court. And I think the number one thing uh, or a couple of things that are most important uh, about being a leader, um, especially when you're a, a younger player in the league and, and people are already starting to look to you is, is that you're willing to serve, serve other people and, and help them soar and become the best they can be, that you set a great example and that, um, you know, you do so within your own personality. Like it's important to be authentic. And I think he's good at all three of those things. I think that he's, um, you know, a person who really wants to do um, the right, is all about all the good stuff. And, um, and I think that he will, he's already a good leader and I think he will become one of the games better over the course of time. We've talked about that several times in the past. That's a, a real focal point um, for all of our young players. I'd like to see them all grow into guys that the league generally looks at as some of the best leaders. Chris Ryan. Hey, Brad, hope all is well with you. Um, do you feel like there are more questions about roles going into this season than recent years? And how will you go about you know, defining who's going to be doing what for, for this group with a pretty talented, deep roster? Well, I mean, uh, the only time I've really gotten questions about it is on these calls. Um, you know, I think our guys know that we're in the process of figuring out who's going to play when with what groups and all those things. And there's going to be a little bit of, um, you're going to be playing a little bit of the back and forth until we're fully healthy. But I think, um, you know, does things in conversations, we'll sit down with them and have, when, when we define roles here, it's, there's a certain amount of things that everyone has to do. Everybody has to take care of the ball. Everybody has to guard with great effort. Everybody has to, you know, be committed to doing whatever they need to do to add value to winning. And for some guys, that means you get more opportunities as a scorer. For other guys, you got to set those guys up. Um, and I just think, you know, people figure out quickly what they're good at and you can figure out quickly who can put the ball in the basket and who can do other things to help you win. And we'll have all those conversations. Um, but those things are things that most of those guys already know. A lot of guys are just waiting to see how that, what that means in terms of playing time. Adam Himmelsbach. Hey, Brad, you guys had said in the release that Kemba was targeting early December for on-court activities, basketball activities. Where is he at in terms of that? Yeah, he does individual shooting, um, mostly spot shooting, a little bit of movement, but that's it. So no, nothing with the team, nothing in um, small groups, just one-on-one -on -one with a coach. Is there a sense on timeline on when that next phase will come in or? I really haven't even asked. I mean, I'm, like you, I'm going to learn more in early January about like real timeline timelines. I'm guessing that like everything else, he'd probably progress to the next stage fairly quickly. Next stage might be like being involved in a, in a, you know, four person group work where you're doing some simulated defensive drills or simulated offensive reads. Um, oftentimes not going full speed. Brian, Rob. Hey, Brad, I uh, just want to check on this, uh, how Tristan is doing um, in terms of his hamstring, if he's been able to get on the floor much, and um, if you guys are expecting to have him ready for opening night at this point. Uh, I think that's, you know, that's hard to say right now. 
Um, he's not been in any part of practice yet. Um, he has done our pre-practice similar to what I just mentioned with Kimba, like a two on two, three on three, very light simulated um, reads work on both ends. So that's it. Um, so that's, uh, so he'll be, you know, he hasn't played in a long time, you know, cause he didn't play in the bubble. So there will be a ramp up period for him whenever he is able to go live and practice. And I'm assuming it won't be just one of those situations where, you know, you're available one day and you get a good practice and you can play. I think it'll be a little bit more than that. So I, I don't know what that means with regard to December 23rd. Every day that passes, I'd say that becomes more unlikely. And have you guys been healthy? Otherwise, obviously beyond Kemba and Romeo and Kemp? Um, Peyton Pritchard um, had his finger pop out today. I don't know what the right medical term is for that, but they were able to place it back and Hopefully there's, um, you know, his timeline to return to practice will be sooner rather than later on his left hand. But um, uh, I think everybody else has been good to go. All right. We're going to wrap it up right there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.